let us consider the microscopic features of mammary gland. I am grateful to Professor Michael Horsch of University of Michigan Medical School for providing the images of histology sections used in this video. Mammary gland is a modified compound tubuloalveolar apocrine sweat gland. It is influenced by various hormones. Estrogen and progesterone help in differentiation and development of ducts and the alveoli. Prolactin helps in milk secretion. Oxytocin helps in milk expression. Mammary gland is made up of parenchyma and stroma. Parenchyma includes 15 to 20 lobes of glandular tissue, each lobe being drained by a lactiferous duct onto the surface of nipple. Lobes are made up of terminal duct lobular units, which are the functional milk secreting units. Stroma is made up of dense fibro fatty connective tissue. Nipple projects from the center of the breast on its anterior aspect. Its level varies with age, size and shape of the breast. It is covered by pigmented thin skin. Pigmentation increases after first pregnancy. Epidermis as elsewhere is made up of stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. As this epithelium is highly wrinkled, it is associated with presence of long dermal papillae. Numerous sweat and sebaceous glands open directly on the surface of the nipple. Oily secretions from the sebaceous glands as seen here act as protective lubricant. These glands become visible Montgomery tubercles on the surface of areola in case of Paris women. Core of the nipple is made up of collagenous dense connective tissue, circumferential and radial smooth muscle fibers and 15 to 20 lactiferous ducts which dilate to form lactiferous sinuses just before they open onto the surface. Lactiferous ducts are lined by stratified cuboidal epithelium. It changes to stratified squamous epithelium just before it opens onto the surface. We are also seeing smooth muscle fibers in the core of the nipple here. Mammary gland shows different features in different stages of reproductive cycle. We study the mammary gland under three stages that is inactive stage seen in nulliparous or non-pregnant women, active stage seen during pregnancy and lactating stage. Inactive mammary gland has abundant connective tissue stroma but sparse glandular parenchyma. Glandular element consists mainly of duct elements. The functional terminal duct lobular unit shows presence of terminal ductules, intralobular collecting duct and sparse intralobular stroma which is devoid of adipose tissue. This inactive gland shows variation with phases of menstrual cycle. In case of proliferative phase, the cord-like ducts are lined by cuboidal epithelium. They show no lumen and stroma is less dense. In case of early secretory phase, the epithelial cells become taller. They show a small amount of secretion. There is presence of lumen in the ducts and stroma becomes dense. In the late secretory phase, the epithelial cells undergo involution and apoptosis. Active mammary gland shows overall increase in the size of the breast. There is increase in the amount of glandular tissue and vascularity and corresponding reduction in the fibrous and adipose stroma. Mammary gland shows progressive changes as the pregnancy advances. In the first trimester, we see branching and elongation of terminal ductules in the terminal duct lobular units. In case of second trimester, we see proliferation of myoepithelial cells. Terminal part of the ductules show differentiation to form alveoli. Plasma cells, lymphocytes and eosinophils will infiltrate the stroma. In the third trimester, the alveoli mature to become functionally competent so that they start, start secreting milk. In the active mammary gland, the terminal duct lobular unit predominantly contains intralobular alveoli. 
we can also see intralobular terminal ductules but they are difficult to distinguish from the alveoli because their lining epithelium almost resembles that of alveoli. In addition, we also see interlobular or excretory ducts in the reduced fibrofatty stroma and this fibrofatty stroma shows infiltration by lymphocytes and plasma cells. The alveoli are lined by cuboidal epithelium with basal nucleus. These cells show rough endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria and supranuclear Golgi apparatus. In, as we come towards the later stages of pregnancy, these cells will also show presence of lipid droplets. Underlying the basal lamina, we find numerous myoepithelial cells which are stellate in shape and they contract in response to oxytocin helping in milk expression. Between the alveolar cells, we also find few lymphocytes. In the lactating stage of the mammary gland, the alveoli are distended with milk. Although plasma cells persist, number of lymphocytes and eosinophils are reduced in the stroma. The distended alveoli are lined by flattened cells. The milk proteins are seen in the membrane bound granules and they are extruded by merocrine mode of secretion. The lipids in the milk form the milk vacuoles and they are extruded by apocrine mode of secretion. So quickly recalling what we have seen so far, mammary gland consists of 15 to 20 lobes, each drained by lactiferous duct opening on the surface of the surface of nipple. Lactiferous ducts branch repeatedly in the lobes to form terminal ductules draining lobules. This terminal duct lobular unit is the functional milk secreting units of the gland. Lobules are made up of branches of terminal ductules in the inactive gland, differentiating alveoli with myoepithelial cells in the active gland and alveoli which are distended with milk in the lactating stage. Fibrofatty stroma is most abundant in the inactive glands, becoming much reduced in the active and lactating stages where the stroma is being replaced by abundant glandular parenchyma. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video. You can also visit this site for similar histology videos.